Imagine being taught by someone like Richard Feynman, a man who was not just an incredible scientist, but an amazing teacher who could explain things in such a fun and interesting way. Uh, oxygen, for instance, in the air would like to be next to carbon, and if they get it near each other, they snap together. If you can get it faster, by heating it up somehow, some way, they come close enough to the carbon and snap in. And that gives a lot of jiggly motion, which might hit some other atoms, making those go faster so they can climb up and bump against other carbon atoms, and they jiggle, and they make mothers jiggle, and you get a terrible catastrophe. That catastrophe is a fire. He takes things that are mysterious to most people and uses very simple concepts to explain how they work. No one even lost the fact that he's speaking about fire in that clip, but it's like you're learning and figuring it out with him. I hated physics as a subject for most of my life and I wanted nothing to do with it until I read Feynman's books, I watched his lecture series, and then a month into the IB, me, someone who's applying for med school, decides to start studying physics as well. And in today's video, I wanted to go through, I wanted to break down exactly how I went from hating a subject to then thriving in it and scoring really well. The first step to study the topic that you're stuck on, that you don't want to study, is to zoom out. Because right now, something like the theory of gravitation is a very complicated, difficult topic in your textbook that you don't really care about. And that's one of the biggest issues we face when we're forced to study a subject that we don't like. We have no interest in it. But nearly everything is interesting interesting if you go deeply enough. The textbook is definitely not a way to fuel your curiosity and build that interest. Real life applications, engaging analogies, things that will get you emotionally invested in the subject. The first thing I did when I didn't really feel like studying something in physics was, or I found it too hard, was that I went on Google and searched up real life applications or recent developments to do with that topic and then clicked on articles or specific discoveries that grabbed my attention immediately. Again, it's a very basic superficial look at whatever I'm doing because it's just, it's, it's just there to grab my attention. Another big thing that I started to do later on was when I started to look into specific topics that I found difficult, I started by reading about them in Feynman's books. And that gave me a very nice, simple, conceptual explanation of that difficult textbook topic. Now that you've dealt with building that initial spark, it's time to emotionally invest. Think of any class or lecture that made an impact on you and ask yourself, what you'll find is that most of the time the teacher actually showed you exactly why learning this thing was important. They showed you high levels of application from the get-go and they got you to care. One of my NYP physics teachers did this in the very first lesson we had with him and he talked about black holes, quantum mechanics, every single application that is engaging but it also is important to physics today and he used his own experiences and at the end of it all of us were excited and buzzing the second we walked out of the class. We were literally talking about physics and I only I remember it so clearly today because all those new applications you talk about gave us a reason to care. Obviously most of the time teachers aren't like that, that rarely ever happens, but replicate it. Do your own little deep dive into exactly why what you're studying is important in the real world. By doing this you're now encoding because now you're associating what you've just learned, what your initial spark, that initial deep dive, to the things that you want to be studying later on that you will be studying for your exams. There's eight core drivers of human motivation all laid out by the Otalysis framework. And the second biggest one of these is development and accomplishment. In other words, progress and achievement. Ever since I looked at these core drivers, it became clear to me that I can't get myself to study something like physics, a subject I don't like, by just saying, yeah, I want to get a good grade. It needs to be a bit more thought out, powerful. My drive needs to be very, very clear. For example, my main desires back then were to get into medical school, to have a fulfilling career in the future, be financially stable. And so part of the reason that I wanted to do well in all my subjects was so I can graduate with top grades. And that could only happen if I was resilient with all my studying and studied properly for all my exams, including physics. As cliche as it sounds, aligning your goals and then working towards a specific goal that you want to accomplish is a very strong push when it comes to studying the things that you don't like. You're not just studying the subject for fun, so after you're done zooming out, building interest and aligning your goals, it's time to look at the exam. List out everything that you need to cover and understand the types of questions that'll show up in the paper. Use the marking schemes if you have them. And basically, analyze the crap out of that exam. You need to get into the examiner's mind. Are there specific question types they focus on more, specific topics they focus on more, what sort of stuff is more common and less common? You need to look at that with a very critical eye. If you want to do well, your entire revision method has to accommodate the questions that the examiner will ask, the types, the depth, the topics, all of it. Question, recall, and learn. You practice, then you learn the content, and then you practice again. Don't have the reading of the textbook, and then the practice 
asking of the questions as two separate activities. They need to be intertwined. A huge thing with subjects we don't like is that we don't understand them. And if we're being honest, we don't know how to learn them. So if you're struggling with something like physics and maths, for example, my recommendation to you would be to first tackle the practice questions, the questions that throw you in the deep end, that force you to kind of try and work out a method then and there without learning the theory, without knowing any of the example solutions. After you've done that, after you've given that your full go, knowing that you'll probably suck at it, then you go and tackle the theory in the textbook, you look at example solutions and you figure out that method. By having that mental rigor to work out the method of the problem before even learning the theory, you're going to be able to remember and tackle each question type with a lot more ease because you have a logical framework to tackle those questions from the start. And when questions in an exam are thrown at you, you're adopting the mindset of, hmm, Let's look at this part of the question, that part of the question, and try and formulate a method to logically solve this problem. Rather than going like, ah, oh, what formulas and equations do I remember that I can fit these numbers and factors and constants into? It's the same with medicine and content-based subjects. You do two to three questions in the same subtopic, and then you go back to learn the theory behind those questions. It's just interweaving the questions with the reading process. It's a lot more effective. Organizing the studying of the subject you hate. I know from experience that organizing the studying of something that you don't like is quite hard and most people think that there's an easy solution just do an hour of that subject that you don't like or that you suck at every day but to be honest it really ever works out that way every day is already filled with classes homeworks assignments things that you're behind on realistically it's very hard to make extra time for an extra hour on the subject that you don't like but what i realized a while ago was that instead of do making this a daily studying process how about you make it a weekly one that's my first organization tip you just need to set out a weekly list of tasks for each of your subjects and make sure that they are done by the end of the week. Make that as a rule for yourself. Essentially, with a subject you don't like, you're not going to want to do it every day anyway, so just spread it out across the week. Do it on Monday, Thursday, Saturday, two hours each day. At least that gives you six hours on that specific subject that you wouldn't normally do, and it's a lot more doable. The second time management organization tip that I have is to use all the lulls, the empty spaces you have in the day. There's so much downtime in the day as a student, whether you're in the car, whether you're in the bathroom, whether you're cooking. So for me, in my last exams, I had this little sub goal that I would do a hundred flashcards every day for a topic that I don't know in my downtime and this over time just became a part of my routine and every time I'd go on my phone I'd just click on my flashcards app and I just it became a sort of a game and it was a very good way to consolidate information at the end of the day or in the beginning of the day whenever I'm free. One of my medic friends he does something similar where he schedules in like the difficult topics that he doesn't know he schedules them in on his phone for the next two weeks like multiple times at random in the day and then whenever those reminders do pop up he just spend 15 minutes on his phone reading through the topic or doing questions on it and that could also work for a lot of people as well so maybe try that it probably sounds like a lot but as soon as you get started you get into a routine it becomes like a subconscious thing that you do and it's a lot more doable than you think it is. The thing we sometimes struggle with the most in our day is to maintain focus. So if you want to learn to concentrate better and work for longer periods of time then check this video out. Thank you so much for watching I hope this helped and I'll see you in the next one.